Good morning, folks. While we've got a lot to cover today, we begin with a quiet sun. Even the plasma filaments are small and sparse and confined to the limbs. So let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find that while we do have a large coronal hole facing Earth at the moment, and we'll be expecting its solar wind to arrive towards the weekend, we expected a stream from the now departed southern opening, and it appears to have missed Earth. We did notice the current sheet interaction in the phi angle, but the telemetry simply suggests the intensified portion of the stream sailed south of the Earth. We're all in normal range here, geomagnetism riding the lower end of calm and quiet. I wanted to show the explosion of energy in the storm that hit Dallas and then moved on to Arkansas two nights ago, and just as importantly, the separation middle of the long convergence storm line as we come through yesterday and into the evening where the storms were not nearly as severe, with the majority of the release being over the water. Looking ahead to Japan, while the key typhoon here is slated to skirt east of the country, it will connect with a low developing from the west and allows it to light up the island nation as though the typhoon were in fact going to be overhead. Eyes open there. Off to the science, where the balloon releases in Antarctica ramped up the last 45 days in order to try to spot the maximum ozone hole of the year, which they did but found it happily to be the smallest ozone hole on record, smallest since it was discovered decades ago. Up next, we're going to the Lucy mission. NASA has planned out an interesting orbit set to launch in almost exactly two years, and after an eccentricity and gravitational boost from Earth, the craft will go past the asteroid belt to the Trojan population. It will manage to use a number of asteroids to help it return for a swing back across the system to Trojans orbiting opposite of the first group, it is ambitious, to say the least. Let's go out to Mars next. Veteran observers recall that Mars is now believed to have once been habitable. Tons of water now locked below the surface, chemistry and organics left on the surface to have boosted life even as we know it. And today, we learn that it likely had saltwater lakes. During a critical examination of the chemistry of Gale Crater, they've noticed it's exactly what some of the saltier lakes in South America would look like if you stripped Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere and allowed them to evaporate. Combined with the water known to ubiquitously reside below the surface, we now have a full recipe for a formerly habitable Mars. Very cool. Let's head out into deep space before bringing it home to close. Carina, the dusty nebula, and within it, the pillars of destruction. ALMA has taken its sharpest look ever at some of the individual pillars and filaments. The paper is linked below, and it is these future stellar nurseries that have taken on new importance in the era of Sophia since it revealed that magnetic fields and plasma turbulence dominate their dynamics rather than random chaotic gravitational effects. Now, folks, unless you are new here, you know that it was Cuvier's, Deluxe, Major White's, and even Einstein's dying wish to find an explanation for the cyclical catastrophe of Earth. We now have the tools to see that our ancestral descriptions of a solar destroyer and instigator of the catastrophe may be the most accurate. For Einstein specifically, it was not a question of if it happened. He did not even question whether or not the Earth turned over. He simply wanted to figure out why it happened and how the Earth seemed to cyclically defy inertia and its own momentum. The evidence indeed can be found across the world. We've looked at the monoliths in South America appearing to have been lifted from below. We've seen giant granite blocks pushed a mile up European mountains. And today, we have some of the best evidence from the Eastern world. While they blame Ice Age actions repeating over millions of years, their focus on a tremendous water event is almost certainly accurate. From two miles high up in the Himalayas, conifer wood was found to have been almost instantly transported from those living heights to the bottom of the sea like in a day or two. They say a massive wall of water was too high for the Himalayas, rolled down over the subcontinent into the Bay of Bengal. This is the first such non-folklore evidence from the East. And the full story can be found in Cosmic Disaster, one of three films linked below the video, available on our channel page, and at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. The three movies will literally catch you up on eight years of the channel in less than one day. That was the plan. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.